G'day and welcome to the second video on the Toyota Starlet. Now, this is a bit different. I didn't intend to do a second video just yet, but I've had this, I struck a deal with a really good friend. Um, and you've heard me talk about Peter Raymakers Motors in some of the past videos, and I'm gonna give them another plug now because they do so much for me. Uh, they're really, really good friends and they're always helping. Now, I'm not a person who likes asking for help, and most of what I do here is just completely on my own. And people have commented, um, that, that's, that's a good thing that I do everything by myself, but sometimes you do get to the point where you need some help. Now, doing engines and all these sorts of things on these Fords, it's sort of simple for me to do by myself, but front wheel drive stuff, yeah, it's easier if you pull the engine out through the bottom, uh, rather than pulling everything apart and getting it out through the top, it's a bit of a pain. And um, it's just a job that I'm not all that familiar with. Now, David uh, Raymakers has a couple of XL250 bikes. Um, there's a complete one and an incomplete one. There's a box of stuff. Uh, and he wanted to have one uh, restored. And so I said, look, I can help you with that. That's, that's not a problem for me at all. And so I actually wanted to help him. And he said, well, if you're going to do that, let me help you with the Starlet. So I was like, yeah, that's, that's a really, really good deal. So I've cleaned all this out. I did it last night after parent teacher interviews and I was absolutely exhausted. But I was out here till 11.30 pushing the MG out, that's gone this morning. Um, we've got all this room here now. Uh, and the Starlet's gone as well, that went yesterday. And so I ended up using a different engine and all this sort of stuff, I'll talk about that in a moment. And of course, while the engine's out, it's having a bit of work done on it as well. Um, not modification stuff, just maintenance. There's a little bit of chalkiness here and there around the water pump, that sort of stuff, so he's gonna do that. So he's taken it there and he's done an incredible amount of work on it already. He did it just today because they didn't have much booked in. And so I'm eternally grateful. So we'll spend the second half of this video at the Raymakers. Um, they, they tease me all the time because I talk too much and I electroplate things and I powder and they're always getting into me. So he's sort of cleaning up brake springs saying we better get these off to the platers and they're manky because I always say manky and all this sort of stuff because I can't swear in these videos, you see. So we spend the second half there. I have a ball. Um, there's a bit of, there's quite a few in jokes there. So it probably doesn't make sense some of the stuff they say to me, but um, it's all in good fun now. I met Michael 20, probably 26 years ago at Toyota. We were both mechanics at, at Yarra Valley Toyota. And then he went off to work for his father, Peter, who, you know, we lost a few years ago, which was a terrible shame. And of course, Dave works there as well. He's a VACC mechanic. So we became really, really good friends. And um, so they're helping me, which is absolutely tremendous because I didn't intend to do any starlet work yet. But um, Dave just says, look, this is easy for me. Um, and while it's easy for him, it's like, well, thanks, mate. If you, if you can lend a hand, that's awesome. So I'm buying bits, he's fitting them and doing all the work on the, um, on the car. And then I'm doing all the work on his bike and he's going to supply some bits for me to do that. So this is actually really, really good because at this time of year, I'm financially hamstrung uh, because of every reg on birthday and all this sort of stuff. I've talked about that before. And so this is a really, really good for me, thing for me to keep the continuity going with this stuff. Um, and also, the other thing is giving, um, I'll be painting the tank on the bike, that sort of stuff, which is the same color I'm going to do the tank in the XC. So I can sort of um, paint concurrently XC parts and bike parts and um, other bits and pieces of powder coating I need doing, I can get done at the same or similar time to, to David's stuff. So it's sort of working alongside, but the main thing is the daily drive that I, that I bought, the $300 Starlet, He's actually been looked after by somebody else. It's been looked after by Dave. So, um, Dave, I'm stoked, mate, and thank you very, very much indeed. So, um, this is sort of dedicated to them, this chapter, and and uh, <laughs> all the work they've done and the help they've given me over the years as well. So, of course, the least I can do is, is help them out in some way. About the only person who's not getting help is Michael, and he's not into bikes, so perhaps I could do something for him in the future too. So, I hope you enjoy. Well, I've got the little starlet here. Hey, that's like half yeah, but we've done the top. That's all. The upper story is all painted. Save for a bit of grass in the gutter, we've got to get down. And of course, the, all the um, bottom needs to be painted, but the bit I don't like doing is the rotted bits of board. Like that. We've done some of them, which is a monumentally horrible task because um, I don't like doing it. Anyway. Hmm. Right, well, I've got the cars moved out of the way. There's a bit of here, and we have a little Toyota engine. Now, you'll probably, well, you probably won't remember this, but this was out of the red one. The little red Toyota that had the uh, cyclist hit it. Now, I removed this engine in 
January 2015. And it's been sort of sitting here ever since. Now, the starter that we got, the blue one, needs a clutch, drive shafts, and it's had a clutch before, and the clutch that it's got now is completely blown out, so the flywheel could be burnt severely. If it's been riding the clutch um, on an incline and overheated, it could well be blue and full of cracks and all that sort of stuff. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility that that might need to be replaced. Now, there's, there's a couple of things with that new Starlet. It runs well. It's done 240,000 Ks, but it's only got a documented service history uh, for the first 30. And there's been two documented services since then. So I don't really know the condition of the insides. Now, this one is out of the car that I had. And that is the book that came with it. So if I look in here, where have we got owner's manual? Should be in the service schedule. Okay, so we've got, um, that's my name and address there, you can't really see it because it's faded. But this is the service book for it. Now it had its first service done, obviously 23rd, 1098 at 1200, 1200 Ks. But every single service since then has been done up to 160,000. Now the engine's done 152. So the last service is was done at 149,000 kilometers. It has never ever missed a service. Now all of the coolant that came out was clear red. Um, the engine is spotless inside because it's had all these oil changes. And so I know this is in impeccable condition and I know the service history is legit because I did every service. The only one I didn't do was the very first one at 1200 Ks, but you can see I did that when I was at Blackburn Nissan. Um, these, have, every single one's been done because I did them. So it's the fact the front end has to be pulled apart in the car and the gearbox replaced, or at least removed, uh, to replace the clutch. It's probably easy just to drop the whole lot through the bottom and stick this engine in because I reckon uh, this is a cracker this one. This is one that I know well. So I need to get this out while removing stuff. There's all sorts of junk around here that I need to remove. And of course, while I've got everything out, I'll pop this in the trailer as well. Oh, I'm puffed. I've been pushing cars around. All right then, this is what we got. We've got the bike frame over there next to the XC. Now, this is a good thing because I can get to the, I can start working on the XC's rear doors here. Dave's two bikes are gonna go here. I can start pulling those apart. I've got mine there. Got a couple of trestle tables I can set up, put everything on those benches, which is just a mess, on the trestles, and I'll make a new bench right across. And just make it tidier. I don't like the way it is now. I've got a large bit of wood there to make a tool board with, and uh, I've got to finish the boards on the house. That's not too far either. So, slow progress. Right, well, the next thing I've got to do is take this engine out. Lots of um, XC trim bits up here. Uh, I'm just going to throw them over here for now. Um, this is all thrown. They're the Fairlane dogweed moulds. They've got to be cut back. But there's all sorts of odds and ends sitting on top of this thing. Oh, they're the fuel and emissions lines for the XC. I need them reasonably soon. There's another set. XY Fairlane hubcaps, the ones I didn't use on the XW. So we're going, oh, that's the windscreen thing. I've got to use that too. I've got to clean that up and use it when I put the headlining in. That's soon too. That covers up the emissions lines and the boot of the XC. Year 11 and 12. So we're throwing these out of work. I thought they were cool. The vapor separator for the XC. There's the drive shaft out of the other one. I don't know, I could buy a new one for about 100 bucks. It's worth using those, I'm not sure. Right, what's involved with getting you out? It's not very heavy, this thing. Should come out quite easily. still stuck in it. I ended up trying to start to lift the bench. Look, like that. <laughs> there we go. Come on, I'll pin you, come. Oh, goodness me. There we go, I think she's free now.
good thing about these is they don't weigh anything. Oh, a V8 Ford dipstick with rust. Is that the 390 one? Could be. Let's have a look at what the ravages of time have done to this thing. Right, it's dusty. It always did have that oxidisation of dead snails in it. How's this thing going? That one seems alright. Looms are all good. What's that? That's a slave cylinder line there. It's all good. I think that's going to be... Whoops, I think it's going to be fine. I actually ruined this. The little dust part down there, I wrecked it. These shafts are alright. But I dare say we'll... We'll put some new ones in. Yeah, it's due for service. Always a bit dirty. I'll just get a spin on there to that, make sure it still turns. Uh, when was that done? 11th of June 97. Oh no, it was replaced on 30th of June um, 2006. It was done at 110,000 Ks. So that's all good. We'll put a new one in. But um, it should be a good little runner. If it's not, I'll <laughs> put the other one back in. But it was certainly pretty good when I took it out. Cool. Found that on the ground. I wonder what happened to that. 3 8 drive, 10 millimeter socket. Hmm. Cool. How oh, I'm just doing this. Look at this. It's still got. Hang on a minute. I can't hold the lights. Still got lovely red coolant coming out of it. Huh. Light is of the essence. Right. So we've got this um, all setting in ready. I'll take it off. Take it over there tomorrow after work, and um, that can go in a little baby blue starlet. So I've got to put this on the front lawn, put the G out to be collected, and bring the XW, which is right down there somewhere. So busy times. Hi, and the plumie, of course. We have to start doing work on that too. expedition here. I've got a few things I need to get. One's a rear engine mount, the other's a radiator. I've got the radiator there because um, the one that was in the car sort of had it and the rear engine the rear engine mount's screwed as well so I'm just sort of pulling all the things out of here um, sort of get the one off, get the bits I need. Let's put that on here, hang on. There's another big box that I need to get found one, I think that's the front one. Might be better than the ones in this, I'll take that anyway. And I think that's the rear one. I reckon it's the rear one. And that's in great condition. Beautiful. I'll take that too. I can't remember what else I need. Um, where's the backing plates? They're the brake backing plates. I don't even know I had those. That's a tranny one. Take that too. Some of this stuff can get thrown out, but I never ever throw anything out until I know I've finished the build. And although I chucked that other starlet out, which I didn't want to do, we still had one here, so I mean the likelihood of needing the fuel fuel pump cover thing for the tank is negligible, but it's easy to chuck stuff out, but it's hard to get it back in sometimes. Because it's tail, I've got loads of spare tailors. Oh I need an indicator too. I intend to drive this thing home on a permit, so I've got indicator lenses here. That's the right one. Is it the right or left? I'll take one of each. I can't remember. It's the left. 
left one. Is that the left? Yeah, that's the left. I'll take I'll take a right and a left. Oh my goodness. So we get in there. We get in there. So I got a radiator. I got the mounts. I got a drive shaft, and I'm gonna take this stuff back in now. Oh, because I don't need it. So here's our engine, all ready to go. This had the cam belt done. Oh, we sort of looked at that before. It was done 109,000 Ks, 110,000 Ks. So it's done 150, so we're leaving the cam belt. I was gonna leave the clutch. It's the original clutch, but it worked well last time we used it, and it's not hard apparently, according to Dave, to take the gearbox out again, if we need to. But uh, he said try it first. He said it should be fine. So that will go and get put straight in the car. Right, so I've got, this is the radiator of the car was pranked, and it's squeaky inside, it's very nice. Well, that does look a little bit dirty on the outside. All three mounts, a couple of indicator lenses, and a drive shaft. So, we'll see how this goes. But that should be right the way it is. Hello, Rosie. Is this recording? I'm not used to using this camera. Oh, yeah, it's going now. Gee whiz, look at this. Huh. This is Dave. Say hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so they're dropping it onto the table. This is so cool. I'll come tonight up with the other engine and take the bikes if you like. Let's see you. I haven't done it on this table before. If it falls off, fall. whatever gets damaged, I don't care. It won't fall off. Hi, Mike. Pete. Here you go, mate. Yeah, good. Thank you very much for your help. What do you reckon for 300 bucks? It's all right. It's a bit of a shit. I've got some other interior bits I can Why stick on. just get a GoPro for your head? Because I don't want to. I've got a GoPro at home. I never use it, though. I didn't know you were going to be doing this now. I had no idea. I've got another radiator, too. I might yeah, get this one stuffed. Is it? I'll bring another one in. The gearbox one was extremely manky. The gearbox one? Very manky. What was that? Oil. Oh, was that? Very dirty. The car's been neglected, I reckon. But it's um, 300 bucks, so I thought it was good. So I'll change the driver's seat, I'll change the steering wheel. The ACM light was coming on. With the CB. Uh, It'll be just the oxy sensor or something. Oh, yeah. I've got a couple of those too. But whatever, it's, I just don't want to put you out too much, you know. Where are the, oh, the bikes are over there. We'll go and take a look at these bikes. See, I came up with the wrong time. The right time? No, I came up with the right time. Whoa, well, oh, here we go. I pulled the other one out through the top and it was a pain in the ass. Yeah, mate, it's easy to drop them up. Because you can take the whole thing out of the gear bag and everything, can't you? Just go, go up a little bit for a sec. Yep, keep going. Keep going. Oh, so it comes. So Peter Raymaker's motors for all things to order. Make sure OH&S doesn't see this. Okay. Just go up a bit. Up. 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 Just it's having a big wee. That's alright. Oh, the aircon compressor's hanging yeah. down. Hang on, down a bit. You might need to take the compressor off mine. Hang on, do you want me to hold it? Yeah, you just pull it back that way if you can. Okay, Mike. Go. 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 Yep. Yep. Now, what I need you to do, just stop there. I need you to just get a block of wood so it won't roll forward. Oh, yeah. I see what you mean, under this mount here. Yeah. Then I can hop off because my arm's getting too short. What about that wedge, Mike? Your whole body's too short. Hang on. <laughs> I wasn't recording. All right then. Well, you want to back in? <laughs> no, because I'm not used to using this phone. I don't normally use this phone. I normally use another one. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Huh. Did it take you long to get it out? Yes, yeah, about 22 hours. 22 no. hours, yeah. That's probably how long it take me on the ground. About an hour and a half. That's cool. Yeah. It's all pretty easy. I probably spent half an hour yesterday and an hour and a half today. Two Did hours. You? That's so cool. No, that's it's so cool time. when someone else is doing it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to paint the... Um, I'll just mask off and paint where that rear mount is. Yep. 
because the battery's leaked in the past. I'll grab another one off Alex too. Yes, so no, all pretty straightforward, Pete. The water pump was leaking. That was it? Like I reckon the water leaking. pump on mine's leaking too, the other one. But I've taken it off just like this. Yep. I've actually, have you left that loom on? Yeah, uh, no. Oh, I left the loom on the other engine, so it's just a matter of two, three, I think, looms to just plug in. So it's probably easier just to stick the other one in and just plug it in. Yeah. And these, these have got, where's the, ah, oh, this. Yeah, they just go down to the power yeah, steering Yeah, that, switch. the other ones are removed, because I, remo I removed and stick them on the other car when I changed the power steering. Yeah. So there's just two blanks there, so That's it just right, plugs yeah. in. Oh, sweet. All nice and straightforward. That's so kind of you. Thanks very much. So much easier with a hoist, isn't it? Yeah. It's uh -huh. Makes, uh, that's why mechanics are fat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm fat and I work on the ground. We hoist to help us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go take a look at these bikes. XL 250s. Where's the other one? So we're making one good one out of two. So we'll do a resto. Hopefully. Oh, we can do that. That's not hard. So here's one of them. This was a dunger from a guy from a wrecker. But it's all complete, which is cool. I think there's a box of bits and lights and all that sort of stuff we can stick on as well. So it's uh, road vegetable. Cool. There's a the little G down there. And here's our other bike. This apparently has got a good engine, but we do have to pull bits of it apart. It's got a stud or a bolt that's broken in the engine into the crankcase. That needs to be done. But it's going to be good. Apparently the rear shocks are stuffed, are they? I don't know. They're not sweaty. Yeah. Someone, I think it was an RACB report from the previous owner. The, the bump stocks are stuffed. Oh yeah. Ah, oh, that's probably what they're looking at. I might bang it. I think I've got some. I don't know. I'll have to get some new ones. Okay. He's only cleaning them this much. He reckons he's not taking them to the electric uh, plate. I've still got to polish them up. Piss off, I'll, um, <laughs> I'll electroplate these bits. I'll paint these bits yellow again, just so that they that, look... That is a credit to Toyota. That's a credit to Toyota, that spring. That is... Ford used yellow too. Did they? Yeah, look at this. Look at the ball. We've got some red here. If we give this a bit more of a clean. This is a daily. It doesn't matter, right? Right, so it's red. Orangey red. Okay, take <laughs> 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 we'll, uh, we might have to get that R classification on you. the back of the linings here. We'll remove the springs. We've we'll got to put them on the new linings. And whilst we're at it, we'll give them a darn good clean in the cleaning fluid. Okay, these guys are Toyota specialists, but I don't know if they go to this length. We do this to every customer's car. Only while the owner's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's about time the owner bloody skedaddle. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get out of here, it's all good. There we go, so they go in the cleaning fluid. We take particular care to not lose the Eclipse, that's in there somewhere. Otherwise you've got to deal with Dennis There's a wave something. washer though, isn't there? No, there is no wave washer on this because someone's done the brakes before thrown it away. and thrown it away. Because <laughs> they're too hard to put in. Yeah, they're a bit. Yeah. So there's no wave washer there, Peter. Look at these guys are teasing me, guys. What I, um, I really like helping Peter out because, you know, he's a good bloke and he tries to do everything for everyone. Very generous person. He's talking to his ass, isn't he? Very cheesy looking. Have you noticed? His brown tracksuit pants. We no, we're wearing jeans today. But he wears the glasses with the moustache and that on. The, the moustache and the nose. <laughs> Anyone can look like Pete. You've just got to go and... To the just, fun just shop. You've got to go to the fun shop and buy you guys, the nose and glasses. You guys are pricks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, That's alright. We went and bought fat suits. Well, to look like me. To know, to look like ourselves. We oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a fair gut. That's what my oh, daughter. My one, daughter always does this. This one is showing signs of um, mankiness, <laughs> just from being in the harsh environment. Okay. The inner drum of a starlet. It's um, perishing. Crocodile foot. Is that a crocodile foot? That's a crocodile foot. A plastic one or a real one? That's a real one. Hey, that's pretty foul. 
This, Pete, is what destroys ignition locks. The weight of that hanging on the lock oh, is yeah. astronomical. That's something for all you people to tell <coughs> your wives. Yeah, to leave their boyfriend's keys at home. Oh, no. you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to go. He's lost in it, man. Dave's washing the springs because he reckons I'm anal. In petrol. In pet. Don't worry. No, it's solvent. It's petrol. No, it's not. It's Caro. It's a bullshit. I can smell. Don't be an idiot. It's petrol. What? No, no. <laughs> Right? That's so funny. Told, told you it was petrol. <laughs> Hi, Mike. How you going? They've done. Look at this. They've got new disc rotors and pads and wheel cylinders and brake drums and linings, and they're bleeding the brakes now. Are they bleeding all right? And, and, and Pete, you like this? What's that? This is what I do on my boat trailer. Once I put the caps on, I put them on with some sealer because I knew you'd be fussy. Yeah, but I don't okay. back this into the water. Actually, I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't even know that, um, I didn't even know to do that. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I've got bits, I'll show you these bits in a minute. <laughs> so I'm taking the loom off, to use the one in the car. Because this one goes inside and it connects up to the ECU and all that sort of stuff, so it's too much sticking around. Mike's having a beer. He's up your bum, Cheers. Pete. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> 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 Woohoo. Nice loom. I don't know what you need this for. I'll take it. <laughs> Maybe I need a plug or something in the future sometime. Might have the slave cylinder can come, come, come off. In the car. Yeah. Oh yeah, I left that there, didn't I? <laughs> nah. Nah, it's all good. So this is the deal. I fix these while he fixes that blue car. And that's pretty good. So that is it for this chapter. You can see the MG's gone, I've got bits and pieces lying around. In the next chapter we'll get these XLs in, we'll start stripping them down, um, sending some bits off to the blasters and the powder coaters. Uh, also there's a few other things I need to do. So uh, for example in this area over here, I need to, that bench is just had it. It's made out of offcuts of bits and pieces of wood and then I've cut it and added bits to it and then you know it's just a mess. So I want to redo those benches and put a tool board up and that sort of stuff and this will afford me time to do that as well while I'm waiting on parts to get back. So this is a really really good thing. I'm stuck a bit on the 750 engine over there. Um, I had to pull the pan off again because I forgot to tighten this oil pump um, pressure relief plug and as I've tightened it it's become loose a bit and it's cracked all through the center of it. Now I don't think it was cracked it was tight when I pulled it off and I'm wondering if the thread hung on, um, but it's cracked sort of around there. Now I've seen this happen before. Um, Dean Segovas on Hack in the Hacker Week series, he had the same sort of thing. Um, so I need to get one of those and uh, then I can sort of button up the bottom end and I need to buy a few bits for that at the moment, but I can't kind of do it. So the 750 I'm going to leave uh, for probably another two or three weeks. So hope you've enjoyed it. Drive safely, enjoy classic, and I'll see you later.